Hey everyone, Grant K for the Flame Learning Channel. Welcome to the series on Active Colour Management in Flame 2017 Extension 1. In this video, we are going to cover a variety of scenarios where you would customise your viewports, customise your displays, as well as customise your input processing using external assets such as custom LUTs, custom colour transforms and custom monitor profiles. So even though the Flame 2017 Extension 1 products offer a wide range of built-in colour transforms, you can still apply your own LUTs, colour transforms and profiles to create a specific look and feel to your production. Let's set up the general scenario. So we are in a project and we have a few clips tagged with a variety of colour spaces. There is some ADX10, ARRI Log C and ACES CG. Now this project is using the Rules Examples Colour Policy that you could use when initially creating your project. It doesn't matter what colour policy you use. What is important to remember is that when you are creating new colour management rules for input or viewing, and this includes rules using user-defined colour spaces, the rules and colour spaces become part of the project's colour policy. This has positive implications on media management, which we will discuss at the end of this video. So for starters, we will look at customising your viewing rules with a custom LUT. Press Ctrl Alt F6 and open the Preferences menu. Ensure you are looking at the Colour Management tab and switch to the viewing rules. In previous versions of Flame, there was a limited number of 10 slots where you could load viewport LUTs. Although this was simple, this did not take into account the colour space of the media or what device you were using to view that media. And that meant you needed to manually activate that LUT in the viewport only when looking at certain media and certain displays or else the colour would be incorrect. With the new Active Colour Management approach, you can define your custom LUT, but you also need to specify the input and output colour spaces so that Flame knows what source media and display the LUT is appropriate for. Now the first step is to create a new viewing rule. Then click the View Transform pull down menu and choose Add New. So this pop up window will allow you to load your own LUT. Here you will also set the expected incoming colour space for the LUT, as well as the outgoing colour space, in other words, the display that the LUT was built for. So to load the transform file, click Browse. I'll use one of the Lustre Colour Motion Picture Film Emulation 3D LUTs as my example. This is still included as part of the Flame install. This is a Kodak 2383 film stock 3D LUT for a Rec 709 display. Back in the new Viewing Transform window, give the View Transform a name. I'll call it Kodak 2383. Now if you are someone who is working with a legacy policy and wants to emulate the old behaviour of loading a custom LUT, it's allowable to set the incoming colour space and display colour space to RAW. This will ignore your broadcast and graphics monitor settings and the tagging of your media. However, the recommended approach is to accurately set the incoming and display colour space to allow Flame to properly incorporate your LUT into the colour management system. So since this LUT expects a film scan as input, set the incoming colour space to LOG using ADX10. And since we selected a LUT that produces REC709 as output, set the display colour space to Broadcast REC709 Video. That's the new View Transform all set up and click Add to add it to the user list. If you were reading the viewing rule, it would state Use the Kodak 2383 View Transform for media that is tagged as ADX10 and only display it on a REC709 video display. Since we are being so specific about the viewing device, change the graphics monitor from sRGB display to REC709 video. 
Now I'll close the preferences and load the clip with the ADX10 color space tag into the viewer. If you look to the bottom left of the viewport, you can see the Kodak 2383 view transform rule is being applied to the media. Now as I said when we were creating the viewing transform, this customized view transform is specific to media tagged with an ADX10 color space. But let's say you wanted to broaden the viewing rule to all log images. For example, back in the reels I also have an ARRI log C clip. So open the preferences again with Ctrl Alt F6 and go back to the color management preferences. Under allowed color spaces, change the pull down menu to any log. Close the preferences again. Now when we select the log C clip and look at it in the viewer, if you don't see the correct view transform, click the pull down menu and choose Kodak 2383. So what is happening here is that Flame is auto converting from log C to ADX10 and then applying the film print emulation. Now let's say for argument's sake, you also wanted the ASUS CG clip to be viewed through the custom view transform. Open the preferences again and change the allowed color space to any scene linear or log. Close the preferences. Loading the ASUS CG clip into the viewer, the Kodak 2383 custom view transform is applied. And as before, the viewing rule is auto converting from ASUS CG to ADX10 and then applying the Kodak 2383 print emulation. This is useful since 3D LUTs often expect a logarithmic input and yet you may want to also apply them to linear CG renders. In all three examples, the conversions I have referred to are applied on the fly to correctly apply your LUT to a range of media. Now to add to all of this, let's say you are viewing the media using a specific graphics monitor. For example, we might be using an HP Dream Color. So open the preferences and change the graphics monitor to HP Dream Color. We also need to go to the viewing rules allowed displays and change it from Rec 709 video to any. Now close the preferences. The image is now lower in saturation because Flame is auto converting the Rec 709 output of the LUT to correctly display it on the HP Dream Color graphics monitor. Now even though I can't show it to you in this video, the broadcast monitor is also converted separately based on its settings. This allows the broadcast and graphics monitors to match, even if the broadcast is HDR or has a different color gamut than the graphics monitor. This is something you should see with your own viewing devices. So to summarize what we have been through, the first step is to add your LUT and tell Flame what color spaces it expects on input and output. The second step is to set the viewing rule which controls whether to only use the LUT for the specific color space and display that it is designed for or to use the ANY modes to allow Flame to apply auto conversion so you may use the LUT in a wider set of circumstances. But if you are working in a legacy policy and don't want any auto conversions between the media, custom LUT and viewing devices, just set the input and output color spaces to RAW when you add your LUT and in your viewing rule, set the allowed color spaces and displays to ANY. So we've looked at how you can customize the viewports. Now let's turn our attention to your monitors and look at how to assign an ICC monitor profile for specific viewing devices. Create a new rule and go to the allowed displays and click the pull down menu. At the bottom of the list, choose Add New. In the Add New Display Color Space window, the first thing we need to do is load the ICC Monitor Profile. Click the Browse button to go to the file browser. I'll navigate to my ICC Profile file. Now this particular ICC profile is for an LG TV. 
you would obviously have to acquire the ICC profile that is specific to the display device you are using with Flame. When we load the file, the default name of the display colour space is based on the ICC file name and the creation date of the profile. Ensure that the input colour space is set to display connection space as this is appropriate for the ICC monitor profiles. The display type is SDR which is fine for this particular ICC profile. Click Add. The allowed displays will show the custom display colour space that is configured with this particular rule. Now you can delete this rule unless you want to use the new display for it. Now go to the Monitors section and change the broadcast colour space to the new display colour space. Note that on a Mac, the Sync to OS button essentially does this automatically for the graphics monitor using the ICC profile you have configured in your OS system preferences. Exit the Colour Management Preferences. Now up to this point, we have only discussed customising the view transforms and display devices to ensure that colour spaces are displayed correctly. Once again, we have not converted the original colour space of the actual media. For the final part of this video, you'll learn how to create an input colour space from one of your LUTs when importing media into Flame. Switch over to the Media Hub. In Auto Convert mode, click the Input Colour Space menu and choose Add New. Now to load your custom transform file, click the Browse button. I'm going to use one of the Autodesk Colour Transform files to illustrate this, but you can certainly use your own. In my case, we are going to use the Canon Log2 Cinema Gamut to HD Video CTF. Select the file and it will be loaded into the pop-up window. In the Name text box, type Canon Log2 to Rec709. Finally, set the destination colour space to Broadcast Rec709. So this input colour space is essentially using a view transform as an input and the Canon Log Source material will be baked into a Rec709 colour space. Click the Add button. Now since this LUT produces Rec709, you could set the working colour space to Rec709 if that's what you want. However, you could also set the working space to anything else and Flame will apply your LUT and then convert the resulting Rec709 values into whatever working space you select. For example, let's select Rec 2020 video to widen the primaries. Now navigate to the DPX files. The files are automatically converted into the working space and this is displayed via the Rec 2020 label on the thumbnails. But if you look at the Metadata Preview window, you can see that the input colour space is using your user colour space before it is converted into Rec 2020. So the Log DPX files are baked with a Canon Log2 Cinema Gamut to HD Video CTF and then converted to the working colour space Rec 2020 Video. Please note that your new colour space can only be used in Auto Convert mode. Tagging with a user colour space is not supported in the Flame 2017 Extension 1 products. However, you may use your new colour space in the input rules to automate the conversion to a working space based on the file name or path. So that covers importing media and baking it with a custom colour transform or LUT on import. To conclude this video, I just want to end off with one very important point. Normally, traditional LUTs and colour transforms are not managed by Flame. However, in Flame 2017 Extension 1, any user-defined colour spaces will be preserved with media management tasks such as wiring and archiving. Furthermore, these user-defined colour spaces are part of the policy. And if you export a policy or create a new project and copy the policy from this project, 
your user defined colour spaces and view transforms will be copied over as well. So that wraps up using colour management with user defined LUTs and monitor profiles. Comments, feedback and suggestions are always welcome and appreciated. Thank you for watching and please subscribe to the Flame Learning channel for future videos.